Well, welcome everyone to this next edition of the Fiduciary Fitness Podcast. Uh, my name is Colin Clark. Very excited to be joined today by Jenny Kiffmeyer from the Retirement Learning Center. So welcome, Jenny. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. And so really excited to have you on. Now, the Retirement Learning Center, well, most of the uh, listeners will know that we did a whole series with John Carl, the founder of the Retirement Learning Center. Most plan sponsors know that they have lots of different vendors that are involved in their retirement retirement plan. They have record keepers, administrators, they have asset managers, folks that run the uh, investments on the platform. And we're really excited about today's topic. We're going to be talking about plan design. How do I appreciate plan design? Today's pre-approved plans that the IRS allows, they have many options that will accommodate most employers' wants and desires for their plans. And so it's important to um, kind of regenerate or rejuvenate the interest in well, let's explore those variety of options and see if there's something better that fits my corporate goals and my employee goals and my own, as a business owner, my own savings goals. As a plan consultant, when I sit on these plan design calls, I, I get asked a lot of questions. I think what you're suggesting is, you know, there should be a, a process by which a good consulting firm is going to find out as much as they can about the business owner and the business so to help them design the plan to make it most effective for the organization. Is that fair? That's more than fair. That's really where you need to start. What is the business looking for as far as their goals, objectives with respect to their retirement plan. Can you tell us why plan design has been de-emphasized? Yeah, you know, we, we refer to it as somewhat of being a plan design is a lost art form. A lot of record keepers, in order to manage the volume, a lot of times they'll have cookie cutter approaches to setting up plans. And sometimes employers will think that those are the only options that are available. That maybe, oh, all I could pick is a safe harbor 401k plan because that has gotten a lot of media attention and most TPAs, record keepers will accommodate those plans. But sometimes it's just good to ask the question, is there anything else? Let me see some of the options that you might have beyond a safe harbor plan because there's some things with my plan I don't like. For example, I every year I tend to have excess contributions have to be returned to my HCEs. Is there any way with a plan design that I can fix that? And oftentimes we'll be able to, to pinpoint something, uh, an easy plan design that would accommodate that. That makes a lot of sense because we work with, you know, over two dozen different record keepers. And, and so I've seen a lot of different plan document templates. No one plan document template is the same. Is that right? Correct. There are uh, what we call pre-approved plans, but it comes with kind of a, a checklist of a lot of different features and options that employers can decide whether they want to include or not. So that's where the flexibility does come in. A lot of times someone will say, well, you have to go to a custom plan document. That sounds expensive. Like, why would I want to do something like that? Yeah, it can be um, because it does, you know, if you are outside of the realm of the pre-approved plan design or prototype plan, as it's sometimes referred to, the next level is called a volume submitter plan. It has a little more creativity involved and more bells and whistles that you can pick from. But sometimes your organization, and it's going to be an organization that's probably larger well-established, has a, you know, a large employee base that would want to accommodate some very specific plan designs for maybe have multiple benefit formulas for different areas or divisions of the company. And so in those circumstances, it may be best then to go to an individually designed plan. And usually those are written by an attorney. So you're going to you know, have those uh, attorney fees and then, you know, the if you're going to submit it then for approval, you've got the approval process with the IRS. So it, it really depends on the level of sophistication that you want to achieve with the plan, how much you're willing to spend. You know, maybe there's a, a happy medium uh, in there that, you know, you can accommodate what you want uh, without having to go full bore with the individually designed plan. How easy is it, have, in your experience, have you seen that most of the major record keepers, can they accommodate working with outside counsel and doing custom plan docs to accommodate plan sponsors? Yes, most of the major providers uh, will have that service available. And you know, they just need to be, the employer needs to be aware that there might be some higher fees involved with designing that plan, setting that plan up. 
on the uh, processing system and you know extra charges maybe for administrative because there's more steps more complexity involved there's a trade-off you need to pay more but you'll get more flexibility as to what you want to do all of the major uh, record keepers tpas will help you know in that process if you find that that is the route you need to go you know this is really a good baseline to understand that hey, look you're not just stuck with the basic plan document you can actually be more creative with plan design so the, one of the things that we, we that you wanted to talk about though jenny is you wanted to help identify uh, strategies to really figure out well, what are your objectives yeah, it really starts with a conversation with the business owner, what they want to accomplish. And, and this could be um, either a business owner who already has a plan and it's not fitting their needs or they're, they're, they're frustrated and, or they're not being able to contribute as much as they'd like, or it could be someone who, who doesn't have a plan at all and you're starting from scratch. Uh, so you kind of start with the, the two you know, groups of employers for example, if you've got one, you know, the employer that already has a plan, just ask them about, uh, you know, what are you, what are your goals? Are, do you want to contribute more? Do you want to have a, a higher deduction? Uh, do you want to have your employees, you know, be able to contribute more? Are you having issues with compliance testing? How about recruitment? Are you, um, you know, finding that you know you you're not getting participants to engage in the plan as you'd like them to you maybe you need to ad adjust your matching formula etc mm -hmm. or if it's too complicated maybe you want to you know simplify your plan in some way but it's really just a conversation with the sponsor to say what do you like what do you don't like uh, about your plan uh, are there resources i believe you wrote a whole resource book uh, about these kinds of things do you address those kinds of topics in the resource guide we do in, in our retirement resource guide, we, we go through every element uh, in the design of a plan from eligibility to uh, participation, to vesting, to distributions, to, you know, you name it. So we'll, we'll each of our, uh, each section in our book will address those specific areas. And then there are other resources online to do benchmarking or just to find out what, you know, if, other employers in my industry, this is what their plans tend to look like. So that's kind of interesting uh, information to have as well. But in the, in the end, it really comes down to what do you need and want your plan or the business owner, what does he or she want your, the plan to do? So in today's environment, uh, you know, considering everything going on with uh, recruitment, retention, like, uh, you know, what are you seeing then in the landscape that, you know, plan sponsors need to be thinking about when it comes to emphasizing the retirement plan? Like how important is a retirement plan nowadays in your estimation? You know, it's really become that you expect it to be uh, one of the benefits that automatically comes with a new job. So, you know, it's really, uh, if you don't have one, that is number one, going to be a, a big boost for your appeal to uh, some you know, to hiring new talent. Um, but your existing plan, maybe it needs a, a facelift. For example, we've got uh, some plans that have started implementing um, being able to for participants to make contributions that can be going towards their uh, student loan offset and the employer can match those contributions going in. That was the, the there's a couple of uh, plans that have started doing that. And I know in proposed legislation that we're, we're looking at, there's actually that specific provision. So it's really looking at your audience, the your participants, what who you want to attract and trying to uh, address what are their pressure points and, and what do they need for overall financial wellness. Well, no, that's, that's a great point because we are getting a lot more questions uh, around the student loan debt, uh, also emergency savings. Have you been hearing things about the emergency savings provisions? Yes, correct. Yes, I think there's a lot of uh, information floating out there about, you know, that, that folks don't have a lot of savings, uh, you know, backup savings. And so what are some options for them? So we want to talk a little bit about financial wellness. Now, what well, financial wellness is a hot topic. Um, it's not necessarily part of plan design. There are some, you know, things you can do for financial wellness out there, but how does plan design contribute to financial wellness in your, in your opinion? That's the $64,000 question or with today's inflation is probably $64 million question. But <laughs> 
financial wellness really is at the heart of why lawyers have retirement plans. It's they're established to benefit the participants and beneficiaries and support them through retirement. And so the plan design as a whole can really lend itself to being able to deliver that lifetime income or you know have the security based on statistics most of a person's retirement income will come from their 401k plan or their IRA with uh, social security being second. So really um, that plan design and designing it for the long haul is very important. You know, and one of the key questions that a sponsor has to ask is, am I a through retirement or to retirement? Meaning, are you intending, you know, your plan is designed just to get people to the point of retirement and then they're on their own? Or are you a through retirement that you really intend to maybe incorporate some qualified uh, distribution options in your plan that then would allow participants to have long term income from the plan itself? So, you know, those are the kinds of design questions you need to think about. Well, and, and isn't it complicated by the fact that people change jobs every two to three years now? Absolutely. I think uh, uh, the latest statistic I saw was uh, we'll, we'll change jobs 13 times during our working career. We've kind of dubbed that evolution as your retirement DNA in that, you know, at every employer, you might have a different type of plan. No two plans are alike. The so one employer, you might have had a simple plan. The, uh, the next employer, maybe you had a 401k plan. Maybe you had a pension plan at some point. So it's really understanding all those prior plans that you've participated in and what is your retirement DNA and looking at that holistically to see what's my retirement income going to look like. So I love that term retirement DNA. I'm going to steal it. I hope you have not trademarked it yet. But I, you know, in my role as a consultant, as a fiduciary advisor, I do speak with, and I've spoken with just this week, I've spoken with several folks and they have lots of 401k plans or other retirement plans just laying around. And, and the decision becomes, hey, do I consolidate them in the, into the plan where I am currently or do I put them in an IRA? And so we help guide them through that process and, and, of course, help them do that in a way that's effective and efficient from a fee and a fiduciary standpoint. But all that to say, you know, you, you save and you save and you save and hopefully you consolidate these plans. You get to a point where, OK, now I'm ready to retire. What do I do with it? And many people are looking to their employers. So from a plan design standpoint, there's been a lot of movement in this area. And there's a concept called a QLAC. Uh, maybe you can elaborate, Jenny, on what I'm talking about with this whole retirement income thing. Absolutely. You know, the IRS is a, a wonder with acronyms. And so the QLAC is a Qualified Longevity Annuity Contract. And it's a, a new type of distribution option going into a plan that you can invest in early on in the plan, and then you'll have some guaranteed retirement income on the retirement side. So that's one of the newest versions. We've also seen lots of legislative proposals that are trying to introduce other types of guaranteed retirement income solutions that a plan could adopt. So there's kind of that movement of, of going back to how can um, I transfer, take that account balance and actually translate it into retirement income. And so IRS is getting on board with that, as is, uh, you know, some of the, the proposals in Congress. So I'm going to ask you the toughest question. I'm going to put my plan uh -oh. sponsor hat on. OK, now I am a fiduciary for all this money and all these participants. Why would I want people that are long retired from my company hanging around with this lifetime income option? Like what's my true liability here in your estimation? That's a very good question. And that's where, you know, as a, a sponsor, you need to decide if, if you want your plan to be to or through. But if you are, uh, have decided you want to be a through retirement, then you need to design your plan from the get-go to support that. It's something, it might be a, even a statement in your investment policy statement that we intend to be a uh, through retirement. And so therefore we are looking at these uh, long-term income options, uh, including those in the plan. So it, it really is just being aware and making the right decisions that support that decision to be a through retirement type of plan. You know, whether you're a new plan sponsor and you're setting up a plan for the first time, or maybe you're listening to this and you've had a plan for a while, uh, or you want to uh, modernize your plan, 
and look forward. You've given us a lot of really good tools, things to think about uh, that can really help the employee who we're all fiduciaries and we're trying to take care of. So uh, Jenny's, I really appreciate you spending time with us and uh, we're looking forward to uh, connecting with you in the future. Great. And, and I encourage you know any uh, sponsor to really talk with the financial advisor um, and, and pick their brain because they're a wealth of knowledge and, and can really help sort through what's good and, and the best match. And, and just to mention, you know, we did mention the retirement resource guide. Uh, you can get that through our office. So feel free to contact us. We can get uh, Jenny's great work uh, to you as a, as a great resource. And again, thank you. And uh, this has been a, a great episode of Fiduciary Fitness. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy our show, we'd love for you to subscribe on iTunes or wherever you access your podcasts. The opinions voiced in this program are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. Investment advice offered through Global Retirement Partners LLC, a registered investment advisor. Global Retirement Partners, Washington Financial Group, a division of Hub International Mid-Atlantic and Hub International are not affiliated with LPL Financial. Global Retirement Partners, LPL Financial, Washington Financial Group, and Hub International are not affiliated in any way with the services offered by any guest on this show. Jeff, he's having to listen to this conversation. All right, hopefully that, uh, hopefully Jeff can edit that, right? <laughs>